Welcome to Hillary Topper On Air, the podcast you can't afford to miss. Are you ready to propose to your soulmate? Now you just need a ring. But before you purchase that engagement ring, it's important to learn the ins and outs of how to buy the perfect diamond. Hi there, I'm Hillary Topper, and this is Hillary Topper On Air. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Esther Fortunoff, who is the president of Fortunoff Fine Jewelry. Esther, welcome back to the show. Thanks, it's great to be with you. So can you refresh our listeners and tell us a little bit more about yourself, your backgrounds, and about Fortune Off Fine Jewelry? Sure. So I've been in the jewelry business pretty much my whole life. I learned it at my mother's knee, who started the jewelry business at Fortune Off, and have been involved for many years in buying gemstones and diamonds and pearls. In fact, I actually traveled to India, Israel, Antwerp, all of the cutting centers many times to see the people who were cutting the diamonds and learn about it from the ground up. Oh. I have a new boutique in Westbury that's Fortune Off Jewelry on Old Country Road and also a website, fortuneoffjewelry.com. So um, I love diamonds and I love finding interesting new things to show to show customers. Awesome. So let's talk about diamonds. When somebody comes into Fortune Off to purchase an engagement ring or a, a diamond piece of diamond jewelry, what are some of the questions you ask? Um, well, interestingly, first, usually these days, people have done some research already. Mm. And that's something that wouldn't have happened maybe 20 years ago, but certainly <laughs> happens now. So they've done a little research. But the first thing I want to know is what's the most important thing to them? Uh, I try to find out a little bit about the person that they are giving it to, um, but also if what they care about is just having one diamond as large as possible or if they want a different kind of unique setting with multiple diamonds, if they um, like knowing that there's a particular shape that they're, you know, they really want that one shape or sometimes they want to know what's trending in the industry. Um, but also it has to always balance color and clarity and, you know, the, with the size so that they can get, you know, the most for their money. So can you tell us a little bit about the four C's, cut, carrot, clarity, and color? What are sure. they and why is each important? Yeah, so color is really the lack of color, so they, we call it color, but it's really you want as colorless as possible, uh, generally, although, so that goes on a scale from D is the highest or the least color down to XYZ has um, some yellow and brown color in it, and um, some people really want the most colorless and other people like that warmer tone. So it, you know, everything in diamonds is really a matter of taste because you have to always, you know, what's important to you. So the color is really not color. <laughs> right. And then clarity is also, so you want it, this diamond to be as clear and free of blemishes or imperfections as possible. And so that range goes from flawless down to imperfect. And in between you have very slightly imperfect and slightly imperfect. And those are like uh, birthmarks, in a sense, on the diamond, so that when you look through a loop and you're seeing into the diamond, you do see sometimes little things that might be called a feather or a bubble, um, a natural, which is, these are all natural inclusions um, 
there might be some little bit of black veining in it. So all of those things are the characteristics of the diamond um, that are part of clarity. And for me, most of my customers don't want a diamond that's below, let's say, what's called an I-1 because they like to look down and see uh, the as clear as possible. And so I try, for the most part, to show diamonds that where there's no imperfections visible to the naked eye because no one's going to be looking at their ring with a loop all the time or when their friends are out to dinner with them, they're not looking with a loop, but you want, when you look down with your naked eye, you want to see a diamond that pleases you and makes you smile. So... Uh, occasionally, even if it has an imperfection that's, you know, you can see with your naked eye, it doesn't bother you. Um, then the cut is kind of two different things. One is the shapes, the different shapes. So oval, round, brilliant, cushion, emerald cut, marquee, princess are all, you know, variations. And then the way the cutting is done, and this is where skill is really involved, where you have um, a cutter who knows how to get the maximum brilliance from that rough piece of diamond. So um, every stone has to be cut to maximize its brilliance and life. Um, so that's, you know, a skill, but the cutting now there are grading reports that will give a, what's called a cut grade. And um, it's still subjective because not everyone prizes a particular cut grade over the other ones, but um, it, it's a good thing to know when you're doing your research that that is part of it. And the fourth C is carat weight. So it's just you know how big or how much is your diamond going to weigh. Um, and so you have to balance all of these things so that within a budget, um, you know, you get the most of what you care about. And I always feel that we can satisfy people at any budget. We just have to understand, you know, what, what's the most important to, to them. Is there a most important, um, one of the four C's? Or are they equal? Well, I would say they're kind of equal, but um, we could laugh and say that, you know, um, no one ever returned a diamond for being too large. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, some people say size really is the thing that matters. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, I, I've actually noticed with some of the younger people I've been helping lately that they really don't want such a big size and that they're not opting for the biggest size that they can have in their budget. Some of them are really more interested in having a tasteful size and having it set in exactly the way that they, you know, maybe have pictured or they've seen on Instagram. So, you know, size, I would say many people would say that's the most important. Um, I would say the you know, the balance of color and clarity um, is, is very important, but it's really what, you know, what's best for you so that if you're a person who wants your diamond to be in yellow gold, then it's not necessary to have the high, you know, the highest color and maybe you want to go for a better clarity. Um, if you're going to have a lot of diamonds you know, set around and you want a halo, then maybe you don't have to have the biggest diamond because the overall design of the ring is the thing that you care about. And so these days there's all different sorts of mountings with um, sometimes it's called micro pave, like a mounting that has a lot of tiny little diamonds around it and sometimes even the prongs that hold the diamond have diamonds in it and so intricate settings um, can become costly and so that would 
mean that you know you would have left less to spend on the center but you know some people want to go that way are there any trends that you've been seeing in recent years among millennials buying diamonds yes i i have um i would say there is a trend away from just round brilliant um of course that's the most popular shape still but many more people are going for um, oval centers or what's called pear shapes. There were several celebrities who got pear shapes in the last five years, and so that's kind of boosted that um, shape, which was actually very popular in the 80s and then you know, had gone out of favor. Huh. Um, I'm seeing more people asking for emerald cuts, and um, a shape that probably people didn't hear much about at all in the past is cushion. So it's kind of like a squarish shape, but with facets that are a little more like a round. Um, but uh, it, it's more of a gentle kind of faceting. It's not... Cl- like crisp, clear, um, the, the facet arrangement is not symmetrical the way a round is. And so uh-huh. you see a lot of differences in them. Some are more squarish, some are a little more rectangular. Um, but so they're a variation on princess cut. Um, so, you know, different shapes have definitely become more of a trend um in the past few years no question there's also a trend a bit with millennials to have an asymmetrical mounting or a very sort of um minimal mounting but adding some side stones but not necessarily um in a symmetrical way you know just a little more artsy a little more organic perhaps Mm. interesting so yeah a lot of you know we're talking about millennials buying um or even gen gen y buying diamonds uh for their loved one some people are purchasing these diamonds online what do you think about that um well I think that you know the world has changed so that people definitely feel um able to purchase almost anything online and yeah. there's no question people are are buying diamonds online. I would say that buying something that has to have beauty or should have beauty um just from a piece of paper online is not necessarily a very is not necessarily the right way to do it in the sense that you don't get a sense of what the the diamond really looks like in many cases on some sites you're just seeing they use a stock photo of just any diamond basically and then you see a report from a grading lab but in many cases these online sellers don't actually have the diamond in their inventory. So they don't even know what it looks like, what they're selling. And in many cases, um, the diamond can look good on paper, but in reality, the combination of those factors that I said, the cut, the color, the clarity, it doesn't come together in such a pleasing way. Um, because the way it's cut makes a big difference, and you can't tell that from looking at a report. So what I like to tell people is, uh, of course, you know, do your research online if you want to, which many people do, but then go into a store, hopefully right. my store, but any store, and view the diamonds and start to you know, put this research that you did to use by understanding some of the nuances and view a lot of diamonds. If you want, go to a lot of stores and see the differences and then, you know, narrow down 
to what you really like because in many cases people don't know what the different shapes will look like on their hand. They don't know what the mountings are going to look like. So there's, you know, viewing a lot, then narrowing down, and then sort of re-review um, now that you know, you know, what you like most and then work with someone who you feel comfortable with, who you have confidence in. Um, and if that turns out to be a website, okay. Um, <laughs> but you need the confidence in, you know, yeah. the, the seller. Who, who's selling it to you? Will they give you your money back? Um, which is so important. And so we do sell some diamonds online, but most often people would prefer to come into the store and just see the diamond on their hand or, you know, in a ring and see the way it is brilliant and sparkles as it moves. And that's, you know, you've got to love the, you know, sort of fall in love with the diamond in addition to being in love with the person. Absolutely. And I'm just in full disclosure, I bought a diamond from Esther about, oh, probably about 10 years ago from Fortune Off Fine Jewelry. And I was showed a lot of different diamonds and we picked the one, this was after being married for 25 years, we wanted something a little bit, a nicer stone. So we picked the stone and then we picked the setting and the people at Fortune Off Fine Jewelry were amazing. They really were incredible. And I've got this gorgeous ring that I absolutely love. And, you know, I think about Fortune Off Fine Jewelry. So if you are going to buy a diamond ring, definitely consider going to Esther at Fortune Off Fine Jewelry. Um, I wanted to ask you, Esther, do you have any um, fun stories that you'd like to share with us on someone purchasing a diamond? Oh, fun stories. Well, <clears throat> I, I would say the, the funner part of it is once uh, the person has chosen the diamond and we have it mounted, talking to them about how they might be presenting it or what they're going to do to make the proposal. Um, you know, so we, we chat about, you know, not putting it into a glass of champagne that the person might <laughs> drink <laughs> from. Uh, not putting it in food, it gets messy in a cake, um, but just, you know, helping people hone their own stories really based on their relationship, you know, what's going to be appropriate to them. Um, I had young, one young man, you know, he and his girlfriend really, you know, they were like outdoors people, and so he, you know, hiked to the top of of uh, a mountain and then, you know, proposed. And so, it, yeah, it, everyone's story is a little different, but um, I would say that's the most fun when people, you know, want to figure out how how is the proposal itself going to be meaningful and something that we always remember. And, um, you know, of course, photography is often involved these days, um, you know, taking selfies wherever it is. Um, but I've had people, you know, get engaged by the fountain at Lincoln Center, which is, you know, just a great place with the water shooting out behind you. And, you know, I, I would say that that's the most, the most fun. So awesome. So finally, how could people get in touch with you and Fortune Off Fine Jewelry? Um, they can go to fortuneoffjewelry.com or they can go to ask Esther at fortuneoffjewelry.com. Um, A-S-K-E-S-T-H-E-R at fortuneoffjewelry.com. They can come into the store where I have a great team of people who have all worked at Fortune Off for a long time, are all quite knowledgeable about diamonds and jewelry, and are very friendly and helpful. It's a very unpushy type store. It's casual and friendly, but everyone has knowledge and are willing to educate um, someone just because we want people to have a great experience. 
Yes, and if we... they're not ready to buy now or they don't want to buy, that that's fine. We have fun showing diamonds and colored stones. Yes, and for we... sure there is a trend toward not necessarily getting engaged with a diamond but using other colored gemstones. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this was such an interesting show. I feel like we can go on and on like this for an hour. Um, and maybe we'll do this again. But in any event, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. It's always fun to talk to you. You've got great questions. And uh, I'm glad I could provide some answers. <laughs> awesome. I also want to thank our sponsors, the Russo Law Group, the Profit Express, Strain Print, and Fortune of Fine Jewelry. And last but not least, I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in. If you want more information on this show or any other show, visit our website at hillarytopperonair.com, or you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Mixed Cloud, you name it, we're out there. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs>